Hello, it's uh, Morgana and Cheryl from Northern Lights Vlog, and we're here in Arviat Nunavut with Joe Savikata Jr. And he is the mayor here in Arviat. Mm -hmm. And um, so, Joe, could you tell us a little bit about um, like your age and background and family and that kind of stuff? Yeah, I am. Uh, 42 years old, the mayor of Angviet here, and I have, I'm happily married with two daughters, one going to the middle school and another going to high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I am the son of uh, our previous premier here in Nunavut, uh, junior, I, I am. <laughs> so and I, he's senior. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm born and raised here in Angviet. I lived here all my life, moved to a few communities before Angviet due to my dad's previous job, mm -hmm. but uh, this is where I'm from here in Angviet, Nunavut. Wonderful. Awesome. Okay, so it's, uh, we're so grateful that you uh, agreed to meet with us and, and yes. uh, have a chat with us. I feel very privileged to have this chat with you. Um, let's talk about a typical day at your work. We know you have a lot of responsibilities, so just take us through what a typical day would look like. Okay, um, I'm, I have two jobs. I'm a conservation officer here in Angbed and a mayor, and I'm also involved with search and rescue, Coast Guard auxiliary, so everything, all of that keeps me very busy. And my typical morning day is, I, my morning start, I leave the house 7.15, quarter after seven in the morning to go work mm -hmm. at Hamlet as a mayor until 8.30 when I have to switch hats and become a conservation officer mm -hmm. until five o'clock and then switch hats again and continue being a mayor again for this town as it's being a mayor of a town this size it's not an 8 30 to 5 job it's continuous all the time mm -hmm. you're always seen as a mayor no matter where you go what you do and all that so you it quite busy my schedule here and i have to try and balance family time with dad and whatnot so mm -hmm it could become quite challenging. That's yeah, fun. it sounds like it. it. sounds like you're probably pulled in many different directions. Mm -hmm. And maybe, can you just describe it very briefly, what are some of the major issues that you address um, as mayor? What are your responsibilities? Oh, uh, try and serve, not try, but serve the people of Angviet and try and find a fine balance of keeping people satisfied and happy. Mm -hmm. that you have to find a balance of if you make this group happy, this one's unhappy. If you make that one happy, these ones are unhappy. So find a fine line, balance them out, and do the best decision you make to for the benefit of the community. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. a lot of juggling, a lot of mediation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. I think any politician would agree completely with that statement that it's difficult to make everybody happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, would you say that is your biggest challenge? Or would yeah, you that's the biggest else? challenge there because you don't want to be one-sided mm -hmm. and you want to treat everyone equally. So that is quite challenging at times. Mm -hmm. So, but it's doable, it, mm -hmm. it's possible. So, and I do it. Yeah, you do <laughs> it. Awesome. Yeah. You and I guess everybody we're in we're very lucky here. We're in um, the town council chambers, which is a beautiful, beautiful room. And how many counselors are on? There's eight counselors. Eight counselors, and then you, and, and then you, me. nine. Yeah. Yeah. Me, yes, me, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, did you want to tell us a little bit about um, your education and how you kind of got to this point here? Okay, I was, like I said, I was born and raised here. I grew up here. I went to high school here in Ambed. Mm -hmm. When I finished high school, I started seasonal jobs. I intended to be a conservation officer mm -hmm. while I was still in school, but they weren't offering first year accepting. Mm -hmm. First year, only second year, which I went into construction, seasonal jobs, and then from there, 
um, there was a job boat being with the Hamlet appointment as an apprentice heavy duty mechanic, mm -hmm. which I took. Went to that's a four year program that I took, and that took me to Edmonton for that. Uh, finished that, became a mechanic, was a mechanic for head mechanic here for the Hamlet here for. I worked for the Hamlet for about 11 years and then switched careers to the, my original, what, what I wanted to be a conservation officer. There was a trainee job open, so I got that, trained for two years, became a conservation officer. When I became a conservation officer, I became a Hamlet counselor. Mm -hmm. And my dad was on council, he became an MLA and there was a seat that opened up so I tried and I got in. Yes. And nice. two and a half years ago, I, we, our mayor suddenly left us um, and I was the deputy mayor at the time and council appointed me mayor mm -hmm. when our mayor passed away. Oh. And this timeline oh. lined up with? Right with COVID, March 2020 is the time. Yes, I'm sure you could never have imagined the events that you were about to embark on. I had no clue what was lying ahead. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have heard through the community that um, there's like a positive um, in retrospect that you had handled that the whole situation quite well, that people were happy with what you had, how you had handled it. Mm -hmm. Was there... What were kind of the challenges or success stories mm -hmm. to do with dealing with COVID? Well, it was quite, um, there was lots of tasks in that. There was lots of conference calls, emails, questions, and um, I was, I'm very easily accessible. So people call me, everything and all that, any questions they have. And there's three, over 3,000 people in this town. And mm -hmm. one might think I'm just going to make one phone call, one question. But you take everyone like that, that those become many 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 phone calls and I take those questions and answer them and if I couldn't answer them I'd get answers for them yeah. from the proper people that could answer mm -hmm. and that was um, what we were doing the whole during the whole pandemic mm -hmm. trying to keep people informed yeah. and keep them safe at the same time before there was a vaccine available mm -hmm. because this community went through a rather lengthy lockdown correct right. We were the hardest hit place in Nunavut before there was a vaccine mm -hmm. and it seemed like the playbook was being written as we were going and learning from Mount Red, which yeah. it was used to gauge by or used by when other communities got hit. Oh, that's interesting. You were on the front lines of everything that was going mm -hmm. down. Yeah. Wow. Um, so. Would you, would you say that is one of your biggest successes, how you handled COVID? So far, yeah, because I, ever since I've been in this job, it's been nothing but COVID. Yeah, <laughs> COVID, COVID, COVID. It's COVID. finally ending now. Mm -hmm. And as you could see, we're not wearing masks yeah. now, which mm -hmm. a year ago, we wouldn't even be allowed to be this close to each other. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So then, I mean, we've talked about the success, that way you handle COVID, but what about in your day-to-day? -day? What would be your greatest joy? Day to day is, um, but not that I'm looking for people to thank, but when people say thank you for whatnot, for any little thing that mm -hmm. I might do, it uh, very makes me feel very humble that mm -hmm. someone is noticing something or doing something. It, mm -hmm. It's better to give than to receive, so mm -hmm. it makes yeah, me small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome, because I think in general in politics, there doesn't seem to be a lot of thank yous. No. There seems to be a lot of critics in the whole in the whole yeah. scenario, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of thank no, yous. Well, Alvet is very friendly, so it was all like a one big team. Mm -hmm. There was very um, everyone was on the same team. We moved forward together, and which helped a lot with any decision making that thing we had to do here, mm -hmm. and it made life much easier. Mm -hmm. because everyone was working together not against each other and that's a big uh, thing there that to be proud of. Mm -hmm. it, when you were just talking about that it reminds us of um, we took an IQ course mm -hmm. recently about the IQ um, principles it sounds like you do a lot of consensus building and collaboration and working together for that common mm -hmm. cause um, that's really awesome. 
just yeah. really awesome. Um, t talking about one of the other challenges of the territories in general, but especially in RDAT too, is um, the housing, the housing challenge. Mm -hmm. um, we we know that there's a lot of issues with um, families being able to to get housing mm -hmm. and um, a long waiting list. It sounds like, and um, and a lot of overcrowding. Mm -hmm. um, what is kind of in the works as far as do you, how do you guys deal with that? The how doesn't really do uh, take care of social housing. It's the housing corporation and the local housing association that deal with that. Mm -hmm. But overcrowding is quite the issue here in Nampid and creates a lot of problem, problems like a domino effect where mm -hmm. mental health and everything is affected mm -hmm. by overcrowding yeah. and under not enough houses. But it, there, there's only so many houses that Nunavut gets each year mm -hmm. and it's based on the number of people on the waiting list on the community, they take that list and see how many people are on the waiting list and each community gets allocated some houses but it's not keeping up with the demand mm -hmm. that is needed. And that's a very big issue there, housing right now. Mm -hmm. I think a recent publication said that there was over like 3,000 people in the territory needing houses but then the most recent um, allocation by the territory was maybe to build 68 houses, right? So that is a huge yeah. gap. It's quite common here in Alvarez to see a house that might be a, an apartment, a two bedroom apartment, to up to 15 people mm. living wow. in a two bedroom unit. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you can imagine, like you said, the, the mental health aspect um, but Health, also, yeah. you know, attendance at school and maybe completion of getting work done because of not having enough space. Um, yeah, lots of interconnected issues. That's mm -hmm. quite the issue and um, everything is seemed to be tied to that lack of housing and yeah. overcrowding, yeah. which when someday, when that day comes, that when we get more housing, that hopefully everything will uh, become better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you had, in our previous conversation, you had mentioned a potential um, success that might be in the works that you were working on. Yes, we, the Hamlet is working on getting a safe shelter for people to use, not on a long term, but on a short term. Mm -hmm. That's in the works, and we are just starting on that right now. And in fact, aside from that, the Hamlet is trying to get uh, two five plexus, which is 10 units mm -hmm. oh, wow. to have as affordable housing. And we're testing that right now and see what we could do with that. So that's significant, that's awesome. That's uh, some brighter days coming up ahead. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very wonderful. positive, that's awesome. Yeah, because that's w w the reason that we kind of got into that conversation was because um, there is um, an issue with overcrowding and the housing and um, women maybe, and men, I guess, too, maybe being in situations where they need to leave the house, maybe even with their children, mm -hmm. and there's not really a place up here right now for them to go, so that mm -hmm. creates all kinds of issues, too. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's transition briefly into the future. Mm -hmm. What do you hope to be doing in five or even ten years? I hope I'm still serving this town um, as long as the people are happy with me, I'll continue to serve and work hard for them and I am happy where I am right now. So the time will tell how that is. How that unfolds. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, what do you wish the rest of Canada, or Southerners as we're called, what do you, if you were to say one thing to them, what do you wish that they knew about um, Arviat or living in Nunavut or being an Inuit man? Yeah. What would you, what would you want them to know? No, life up here is challenging. Um, it, if you have an opportunity to move up to Nunavut, specifically Arviat, please do so. And there's a lot of people that think up here that Inuit don't pay taxes and they do pay taxes like any other Canadian mm -hmm. does but it, I hope people do see this video and 
get enticed to move up here to experience life in the north. Mm -hmm. It's quite different than the city. There's no trees here. Uh, lots of snow. Christmas, you're guaranteed to have snow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. yes, we were. <laughs> yeah, it definitely has, uh, living up here is six months and eight months, I guess. We definitely, it's a unique, unique experience. Mm -hmm. Um, to not just visit, but to actually live up here. I'm so grateful for that, for the opportunity that I've had to, to come up here. Yeah. And what is your hope for the future of this community? My hope for the future of this community is like to grow more and have our children better educated, leave on vet, come back with all the experience and education to better serve on vet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, really important um, when it comes to healthcare, when it comes to education, when it comes to so many different um, fields, right? Having local people who are part of the culture, part of the community, and bringing that back in, mm -hmm. um, that would be fantastic. Yeah. As um, so, Cheryl and I are two are two teachers <laughs> up here, so we are quite embedded, of course, with the education system up mm -hmm. here. Um, so as mayor and town council, um, just wondering what kind of influence that you guys would have over having the students become more educated because we see you know, a lot of um, non-attendance and that, those sorts of issues. Is there, what kind of influence would you guys have? Uh, we could write letters and petition or the government to do something, but we just had a meeting uh, with some officials at education and they said they're working on um, a solution to try and increase attendance here in our bed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we'll see what that is and hopefully it works so that kids start to go to school mm -hmm. not only go to school but do learning and be um, I don't know what the word is but be more engaged engaged in school mm -hmm. yes. do you think if there were more Inuit teachers more enough to speaking teachers and classes, more, you know, culturally relevant curriculum, do you think any of that would have an influence on attendance and performance I'm or is it something sure. else? I'm not sure about that, but this is my personal belief. I was raised here, went to school here, and I speak Inuktitut, and there was almost no, there was no Inuktitut classes when I went. To me, Inuktitut should be at home, oh, okay. taught in home. Mm -hmm and you focus on English in school because when you go off to university or everywhere, there's no inuktitut there. Mm -hmm. It's all English, it's just a standard universal language. Preparing them. Mm -hmm. um, inuktitut, Angved is one of the strongest places where inuktitut is very strong. It's the street language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure other towns, they're weaker in that area, but Angved is very strong with inuktitut just have to work better on um, the English part and educate the kids better so that they could go to universities and be accepted into universities without having to upgrade. Okay, really mm -hmm. interesting perspective. Thank you for sharing that. Because that's quite often, we noticed with our interview with Marika that she had to do a bridging program mm -hmm. in, um, in, in Ottawa, Ottawa mm -hmm. um, before. So that was, is that a lot of the case? Mm -hmm. That's what happens is they... Yeah. You have to do a lot of bridging programs, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, that was um, a great chat with you. I don't know if you had anything else that you wanted to add or anything um, that we've forgotten that you want to add in at the end? No, or I think I covered pretty well everything and mm -hmm. um, moved on with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we appreciate yeah. you. It uh, truly is one of the most friendliest places that I have ever lived in, so I agree with you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, we truly appreciate um, having this chat and we hope that lots of people get to watch it and learn a little bit more about living up north and living in RDI in particular. And um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.